Um, so um, it's a pleasure um, and, and certainly an honor uh, to, uh, to be here uh, <clears throat> to provide a bit of an overview of the uh, CCDI, um, the progress uh, to date, um, and uh, hopefully uh, some uh, future uh, developments uh, that uh, I can share with you. And, and there's been uh, a, a a uh, significant uh, discussion, um, and uh, you know, I hope uh, this uh, will uh, certainly lead to uh, some questions and, and further discussion. So, I guess before starting, uh, I do have uh, a bit of a disclaimer, um, in that I'm still a full-time employee of the Food and Drug Administration, and yet I'm giving this uh, presentation uh, on a program initiative uh, that is directed and funded by the National Cancer Institute. But we're all one big happy family in the Department of Health and Human Services. So I hope uh, <coughs> you'll all uh, forgive that. But I suspect that most of you know uh, that CCDI was uh, first uh, proposed uh, uh, during the uh, President's uh, State of the Union address um, in 2019, uh, where there was a pledge of uh, $500 million uh, over for 10 years, uh, annually for 10 years, to the NCI to support uh, childhood and uh, adolescent young adult uh, cancer research. And it was really uh, decided to focus uh, on uh, data sharing to maximize uh, the benefit and power of uh, uh, critical data uh, being generated, uh, but unfortunately uh, in silos. Uh, and I think uh, here, <laughs> I've heard uh, some impressive uh, work uh, about uh, brain tumor data um, that is not siloed. So this is, uh, this is really great. But CCDI is really being leveraged uh, to uh, really build a wider community. Uh, so not just investigators, um, but investigators, patients, uh, and families. Um, and I think uh, we can also uh, uh, include uh, regulatory agencies uh, as well as uh, hopefully uh, pharmaceutical companies um, as well. So the data that uh, are really being sought uh, to uh, aggregate um, and harmonize uh, uh, to the extent possible and ultimately uh, analyze our clinical data, uh, including uh, outcome data and treatment data, uh, genetic or uh, molecular uh, genetic data, um, biospecimens, of course, uh, longitudinal outcome data, uh, and population-based uh, data. So I think CCDI, to some extent, builds on a momentum of uh, research uh, and data sharing uh, policies, uh, um, beginning uh, in 2014 uh, with the uh, Gabriella Miller uh, Kids First Research Act, um, certainly uh, extending uh, to the uh, uh, cancer moonshot and the blue ribbon panel in uh, 2016, um, the STAR Act uh, in uh, 2018, uh, and then uh, uh, with the uh, CCDI in 2019. In 2019, uh, following this uh, announcement, uh, there was uh, a small uh, working group, well, not so small, uh, we were a pretty large working group uh, to uh, develop a white paper that would be uh, presented uh, first to the National Cancer Advisory Board and then to the Board of Scientific Advisors of the NCI uh, that would really uh, sort of form the uh, framework, if you will, of the, uh, the CCDI. <clears throat> so that uh, uh, working group uh, came up with uh, 24 specific uh, recommendations. I won't really go into them uh, here. Um, but, but they just to sort of lump them together into uh, large groups. Uh, one was to uh, really develop a landscape uh, analysis of uh, data availability um, and uh, needs analysis, the types of data that were needed to be collected and aggregated, potential barriers to progress, generating new data, um, and hence the uh, uh, molecular characterization initiative, the distinction between uh, research uh, and clinical data uh, and the utility and portability of that data for patients and families, engaging a diverse array of uh, stakeholders for input uh, and potential opportunities uh, for transformative discoveries. So the foundational framework uh, uh, was really that data needed to be gathered from every child, uh, adolescent uh, and young adult uh, diagnosed uh, with cancer irrespective of where they lived, irrespective of where they were diagnosed and uh, being treated. So just a few uh, accomplishments. Uh, um, there's been uh, some, not complete, uh, obviously, progress uh, on the development of a CCDI data ecosystem. 
Um, you've heard today some of the challenges um, and uh, there are certainly uh, some uh, competing um, and hopefully uh, complementary uh, uh, activities uh, going on uh, with the uh, data ecosystem uh, working group uh, in, uh, in CCDI. The National Childhood Cancer Registry uh, is something that I'll uh, mention uh, in a minute, uh, the Childhood Cancer uh, Data Catalog. Uh, you heard uh, about the uh, CCDI Molecular Targets Platform, uh, which to me uh, was uh, a major event, uh, having been responsible for the development of the FDA's uh, relevant and non-relevant molecular target uh, <coughs> lists and having to use them uh, for the last uh, three years. Um, and then expanded eligibility for the uh, Molecular Characterization Initiative. So the ecosystem uh, is envisioned as a connected network of tools and resources that will bring together all of the types of data that we mentioned uh, from multiple uh, separate uh, data collection uh, sources uh, and provide tools to use the data uh, and use the data in new ways. The NCCR, the National Childhood Cancer Registry, uh, is really sort of a rapidly growing uh, public health uh, statistics data resource, collecting data uh, from children uh, and uh, young adults uh, with cancer, um, enhances access to and use of childhood cancer, as well as survivorship data. Uh, and it allows uh, researchers uh, to answer important uh, questions uh, um, that uh, hopefully will ultimately uh, improve uh, outcomes. So currently, um, there are seven uh, uh, NPCR registries uh, that uh, data from those registries uh, are incorporated, uh, as well as uh, data uh, from the uh, <coughs> state uh, cancer registries that are part of the SEER registry. Uh, and there are now, uh, I think, about 70% of all US uh, children diagnosed uh, and adolescents and young adults diagnosed with cancer. Uh, that are uh, actually part uh, and uh, accounted for in the uh, NCCR. The goal over the next several years uh, is obviously uh, to uh, expand that um, and to uh, include uh, additional data, uh, including uh, longitudinal outcomes, uh, genomic characterization, uh, and trajectory of uh, care, uh, as well as uh, risk uh, recurrence. There are a number of uh, NCCR uh, uh, working groups, um, uh, the metadata uh, working group, a data quality uh, working group, um, data products uh, um, that will uh, ultimately, uh, I think, uh, <coughs> be uh, important uh, for the uh, uh, final uh, release of uh, the NCCR uh, and uh, the data access. So just uh, as an example, uh, one of the uh, um, <coughs> systems that have been set up is the uh, NCCR Explorer. Uh, it enables uh, patients or enables uh, investigators uh, to look uh, at uh, pre-calculated statistics using dynamic tables on histology-based uh, uh, groupings, um, looking uh, at uh, outcomes uh, and uh, incidence uh, of uh, specific uh, pediatric uh, tumors. And this is just an example of, uh, of retinoblastoma. Um, and you can see uh, from this case the, the incidence by age group uh, and the well-known fact that this is uh, primarily a disease of very young children. The Childhood Cancer Data Catalog uh, is an inventory of childhood cancer databases, uh, includes uh, repositories, uh, registries, uh, data commons, websites, um, and uh, has developed, is envisioned as a, a resource uh, for uh, researchers uh, as well as uh, uh, for uh, families and, uh, and patients. The molecular targets platform, I won't spend any time on uh, because uh, we uh, saw the Anne's uh, presentation uh, earlier. I think one of the uh, major um, movements, if you will, of the CCDI is the molecular characterization uh, initiative. Uh, and this really um, began uh, because um, outside of uh, CNS tumors, uh, the number of uh, children um, that uh, uh, had uh, <coughs> sequencing of uh, their tumors uh, at diagnosis uh, or even at recurrence uh, was, uh, was really pretty small. Uh, so this uh, is a partnership uh, that currently exists between the NCI and the uh, Children's Oncology Group's uh, project, uh, Every Child, providing state-of-the-art uh, molecular characterization, 
um, including uh, whole genome uh, or whole exome sequencing, RNA-seq, uh, and methylation studies uh, with the expectation that uh, participants and treating physicians uh, would be informed of their results uh, within uh, 21 days. And re any remaining samples uh, would be uh, stored in a biobank. Uh, this is all being done in a uh, CLIA um, approved laboratory at uh, Nationwide Children's Hospital. Uh, and this just uh, demonstrates uh, some of the uh, <clears throat> aspects of the clinical and research data pipeline uh, that uh, is uh, envisioned uh, for this uh, program. Um, these are data that uh, Jack uh, Sharon, who uh, along with uh, Katie Janeway at uh, Boston Children's, Dana Farber, um, are running this, uh, leading this uh, effort. Uh, but just to show that uh, um, the number of uh, consent of patients and families uh, consenting, um, the uh, um, <coughs> submission of specimens uh, to the Bio uh, Repository Center, uh, the receipt, um, and then the uh, return of, uh, of results. Uh, and most of this is actually happening uh, within the uh, uh, three week uh, time frame. So this began with brain tumors uh, because of the obvious uh, unmet uh, clinical need. Um, although hearing uh, uh, what you've uh, been able to accomplish in the CBTN, um, obviously uh, you've already uh, made uh, a huge uh, impact uh, on obtaining these data. The expectation is that this will move outside of uh, COG. So you won't have to be um, a patient seen at a, a children's oncology group institution. You won't have to uh, uh, enter this uh, program uh, by <coughs> enrolling on the Project uh, Every Child study, uh, because uh, as best I can tell, Project Every Child isn't really Project Every Child, or doesn't include every child. So I think there's an opportunity to really expand this. Uh, in addition, um, the, um, uh, this uh, actually began uh, just uh, five or six months ago. Uh, within the last month and a half, uh, the uh, program has expanded to include soft tissue sarcomas, um, and the uptake uh, has been uh, pretty rapid there as well. Um, the in it's envisioned that at least 3,000 patients a, a year will be uh, evaluated. Um, and the next uh, group of patients uh, are uh, those uh, with uh, rare pediatric uh, cancers. <clears throat> so as far as a, a data release, uh, this will all be done through uh, dbGaP, um, as uh, has already uh, been uh, discussed. The other um, upcoming issue, uh, or upcoming plan, if you will, uh, for the CCDI is a, uh, a nationwide uh, national rare pediatric uh, uh, NAYA rare tumor uh, initiative. Um, these uh, are obviously um, less than 150 uh, cases per million per year collectively, um, less than two cases per million, 11% uh, of all pediatric uh, cancers. Um, and the progress uh, for many of these uh, rare tumors uh, is uh, clearly lacking uh, with uh, an incomplete understanding of natural history and biology uh, and a lack of uh, treatment trials. So there are several uh, rare tumor efforts uh, that are ongoing, uh, several well-established ones, uh, but they remain somewhat siloed. Uh, and there's a real opportunity here for uh, data aggregation uh, because many of the molecular drivers uh, actually uh, um, cross uh, from one tumor to another. Um, and there may be uh, obvious uh, biologic as well as uh, therapeutic uh, uh, initiatives uh, that, uh, that could be shared. So uh, data collection is not well standardized uh, or structured. Uh, and I think a national effort uh, uh, to uh, enroll adequate numbers of patients uh, could more rapidly and efficiently and consistently uh, provide an opportunity to study multiple rare cancers. So again, a CCDI uh, coordinated uh, effort uh, will enable recruitment of sufficient numbers of specific uh, rare cancers to build a registry of uh, those uh, rare cancers uh, that incorporate structured data, uh, including real world data. Key elements of the uh, proposed uh, study, uh, such as establishment of a core set of uh, clinical data would be collected for every patient uh, and synergistic uh, with uh, other CCDI uh, efforts. Um, and it's envisioned uh, that uh, over time, um, these could actually uh, evolve into specific uh, clinical trials. Um, there's certainly uh, 
with, I mean, it's clearly understood that there are already uh, activities uh, ongoing in this area. Uh, and this is not planned as a way to duplicate uh, or to uh, take over those activities, uh, but again, to uh, integrate um, those activities and, and share data. So just uh, a word uh, about um, communicating uh, um, and um, getting more information uh, uh, about CCDI. Uh, we're open uh, to uh, suggestions, uh, recommendations, uh, uh, from all stakeholders, uh, so investigators, parents, patients, um, community uh, activists. Uh, so there's a, a monthly uh, newsletter um, that uh, is available uh, for subscription that will have uh, a monthly uh, progress updates. Um, the social media uh, hashtag is there. Um, and just mentioning a couple of uh, upcoming uh, workshops uh, and events. Uh, we have two workshops uh, planned uh, in November. Uh, November 2nd, um, that's not H-E-R, it's E-H-R, Electronic Health Writer <laughs> Data Extraction. Uh, this just shows the, uh, uh, the two uh, um, worlds in which I live right now because I was uh, looking at a uh, pediatric study plan for a HER2 uh, inhibitor uh, and a pediatric uh, development plans. So when I saw E-H-R, I just mixed those up. So, um, But that uh, is uh, planned for uh, November 2nd. Um, um, these are both uh, virtual uh, workshops, uh, and then there's a rare tumor uh, workshop uh, that is planned for uh, November 18th. Uh, so I hope uh, you'll take advantage of those, and if I can answer any questions, happy to do so. Thanks.